to go ahead and get us started. All right, Tracy, tell mm -hmm. you. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. So glad to see Donalisa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, great, so glad to see everybody this morning. Um, my name is Tracy Irby, and I'm the director here at the Center for Women Entrepreneurs. Uh, we were funded by the state legislature just to help promote women entrepreneurs anywhere in the state of Texas. You don't have to be affiliated with TWU or the university system to take advantage of the services that we offer. We're part of the larger Jane Nelson Institute for Women's Leadership. It's actually this whole floor up here. The Institute is dedicated to preparing more women to take on successful roles in business and public service. It's three centers, the Center for Student Leadership, Center for, our center, Center for Women Entrepreneurs, and the Center for Women in Government ensure women have the education to establish careers as successful executives, skills for building entrepreneurial businesses, and framework needed to run for public office. So we're happy to have you here. We also have a small uh, exhibit hall uh, or exhibit hall down there uh, if you'd like a visit sometime as well. I'd like to introduce our staff. So Donna Lisa Stenier is our associate director. She's the one who's been guiding all of you this morning. Over there's Barbara. Okay. She is now, I guess, um, photographer too. <laughs> and she usually uh, handles, handles Facebook. Kimberly Nielsen is online. She's our online hostess and helps those uh, that are online. So now you know who we are. We also like to know who, who all of you are too. So we're gonna go around the room, um, ask you to state your name and, and your business. And I'm looking right at you. <laughs> um, e e either, whatever you're comfortable with. Just. Um, Pauline Donovan and I recently started this year, started this year, uh, so I think just starting this year. I think they go right there. That's exciting. Yeah. We can all that start happens. somewhere. No, yeah, that's right. Sure. I did just want to say before you're next, all of you online, uh, make sure you put your info in the chat as well. All right, now. <laughs> Everyone, my name is Kathleen Salas. I am one teacher here at the U. Um, this is my sophomore year, and I haven't started a business yet, but I hope to uh, after graduation. Nice. Right. 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 Um, I'm Alex Murray, and I'm a certified life coach uh, here in Denton, and um, I'm helping anyone who wants to make a breakthrough in their life, whether it's in their career, their health, their um, their personal growth um, are the relationships. And so, yeah, I just, I just started in August and I'm excited to get going. Thanks. I will follow suit. I'm also a life coach um, as well as a communications coach. And I just started my business. My name is Elena Doyle. I forgot to mention my name. <laughs> um, and uh, I just got a PhD from the University of North Texas about a year ago. So excited about that. I just started my business in May of this year. Um, the other thing is that my husband and I are owners, uh, we're Texas veteran business owned certification, so we're both veterans and so excited about that. The business that I have is a, co a coaching and consulting firm. I help um, businesses with um, how to integrate veterans into their organizations. I help veterans as well and then any type of learning and development support that someone needs, I help with strategies and things like that. Okay. Well, next, uh, Mary Rose Weil. Um, I just launched um, my company in August of this year. It is an HR consulting company uh, nationwide. We have about 100 coaches, and we specialize in uh, strength space, outplacement services, career coaching, leadership development. Hi, everybody. I'm Jen from Casa of Denton County, um, but I do have a business that I'm, I'm hoping to co-host maybe at some point. Um, anyway, CASA, um, court-appointed special advocates assisting children who are going through the foster care system. If you have any interest in that and learning more about that, please see me after. Thanks, Jen. CASA, Denton County. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Corbona from Big Service, and in a way, this is really my second business I'm now getting into. Um, I am 
mechanical engineer turned psychologist to a coach. So what I really care about is women who are in non-traditional fields in a way, women who really feel strongly about wanting to start a business and really believe in it. But as a psychologist, I also know that it's difficult to find that work-life balance because as an entrepreneur, you usually feel like you have to do it all. And so that's kind of what I really care about, wanting to not, you know, coming in by the time people are deal with mental illness, but see, can we do something beforehand? Can we just improve people's productivity, get their quality of life and their business major in the process? Hi, I'm Morgan Kennedy. Um, I run my own architecture and interior design company, and I'm also a mom, and I have another one on the way. <laughs> uh, my name is Cynthia. I have a consulting business where I help people start and grow their business to leverage business credit. Um, I originally started in Illinois and then I started a business out here in Texas actually this year. So I've been in business almost five years, but only this year in Texas. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Yolanda Brackens and I am in the exploration phase. <laughs> I was starting the business, so I would be interested in food catering or public speaking. So that's why. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tracy McDaniel. I'm a Texas veteran, and I'm here exploring opportunities. And I'm also attending our UTA uh, Texas Veteran Business Conference that's coming up on the 10th. I don't know if our veterans in here know about that, but that's coming up on the 10th. We're going to have over. Um, I think it's eight different local businesses in different centers, helping uh, Texas veterans start their own business. So. Great, thank you. Such a, a nice, so many new faces too. Glad to have you here today. Um, we want to remind everybody and those online, you will get the replay afterwards um, and the resources and Lindsay is sharing her presentation. So all of you will get that afterwards, all of you in here as well. So we're going to introduce our speaker now. So Lindsay has been a part of the Women's Business Council Southwest, WBCS, for nearly 10 years and is leading the council to the next level, increasing their footprint throughout the four-state region, increasing engagement with their corporate and women-owned members, while also spreading the word of the amazing accomplishments women-owned enterprises are achieving daily. She provides extensive leadership experience, strategic business, vision, program design, and collaborative partnerships. I'm glad to be a Thank partner you. too. Yes. So, yeah. Lindsay. Thank you. And hi, virtual audience. Um, I'm going to, um, this is kind of, I like to keep it casual and informal. So y'all feel free to pause and ask any questions that you have throughout the presentation, because I know it can be a lot of information. Um, and thank you to Tracy and Donnelly's and team for having us here today. We love the partnership that we have with the university. While Donnelly's is getting me set up too, um, I'm, it's really helpful for me to hear your businesses or your thoughts because then I can kind of answer any questions that you have specific to where you are in this business ecosystem, whether you're thinking of an idea and trying to figure out if it's worth pursuing um, or, you know, wanting to reach global expansion, right? So we, we can help support you throughout that process. Um, and they will also put in my contact information. Um, so if you have any questions later on, feel free to reach out um, as well. All right, let's jump in. So the Women's Business Council Southwest, as Tracy mentioned, so we, are, we exist because we want to help women-owned businesses grow. Right. And with that, we we provide educational opportunities. We provide networking opportunities, um, procurement opportunities, which is opportunities for you to do business with one another, as well as corporate America. Um, we are a part of a national organization called WeBank, um, or you might have seen WBENC. And I'm going to use a lot of letters today, just like you probably have experienced in the past um, with businesses. So with the national organization, they're the ones who set the standards for certification of women-owned businesses. So they're the ones who said, your business must be 51% <laughs> owned, operated, and controlled by one or more females. And that's for our certification. And I want to really 
give that context because we are a national certification. There are certifications that exist that are open to just like your local area. This one is nationally recognized. So if you want to do business in Chicago, but you're based here in Dallas, Fort Worth area, you would go through our organization to get the processing done. And so you can kind of see here on this map too, um, the four state region that we cover. So we're a lean and mean team of, uh, of ladies, but we cover a four state area of North Central Texas down to Austin, um, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and New Mexico. So I know for the audience, even online too, um, y'all may be in another part of Texas that are joining us today. Um, so we can help you navigate who you would go through if you are in that San Antonio or Southern half. Um, we have a, a friendly relationship with our Houston partner organization as well. Um, along those lines, though, I'm, I'm, I love seeing the numbers of women-owned businesses that we have, and we can absolutely grow that. There are over 14 million women-owned businesses across the country. We have 1,400 certified in our um, in our area, most of them are going to be in the DFW Metroplex in Austin, um, just because everybody's moving to Texas. <laughs> you know, so everybody's coming to Texas. The corporate America is here in Texas, and so they want that um, that lifeline support. And speaking of the corporates, we have about 80 corporate partners um, that are in our network as well. So you might be thinking, gosh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just thinking of a business right now, or I'm really, really small. Does this even apply for me? And I want to kind of break down the demographic of the women in businesses that we work with, right? So as you can kind of see on the far left-hand side, that pie chart showcases how big and small we represent. So you don't have to be a multimillionaire um, in annual revenue to find certification beneficial. Actually, if anything, the majority of our membership is just shy of that million dollar mark. So don't count yourself out just because of your annual revenue. Um, the other really cool thing I like to point out in this slide is that red box that says the top WB industries. So as you can kind of see, these are not the stereotypical women business, right? You're going to see construction as one of our largest demographics of women owned businesses. And that's in the nitty gritty like gaskets and coils and all the things, right? Um, IT, manufacturing, I heard a lot of consulting in the room today too. Um, so those are just some of the top industries that we have in our network. So don't count yourself out just yet. And this is kind of your eye chart for the morning, <laughs> but I like to showcase the scope of our, of our corporate partnership. So with the Women's Business Council Southwest, we have about 80 corporations that particularly want to do business with diverse and women-owned businesses. So what does that mean? That means your Walmart, your Shell, your Raytheon, your Texas Instruments, your city of Dallas, these entities are either setting aside money to do business with women-owned businesses and making sure that their goals align with hitting those numbers. So that doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to get a contract because you're a woman, right? But at least it's a door open for you to have the chance at that contract opportunity. And so you can kind of see here, and this is, you know, I always say this is a great group of people to start with if you're looking to do business um, with major corporations or local government entities because they are walking the, the talk, right? They're actually putting the money where they are, um, where they want to. And so when you're buying, this is a great group to start with. You know, we have the, the purse strings, right? We literally can make the decisions for our households. And so supporting those that support you goes a long way. Um, but as you can see, I mean, national corporation, um, as well as local government entities. And that's why that national certification really makes a difference versus some of those that are locally centered because you can do business in San Diego and do business with San Diego Electric, for instance, because they support of the national scale as well as many of these. And you can see here too, just how much they're spending with women-owned businesses or WBEs as we call them. I mean, $10 billion. I mean, that's a lot of money that our corporations are reporting out. So let's talk certification. We actually support four certifications through one application. We're a one-stop shop for certification. So when you're going through the process of actually completing the application, you'll start with that far left one, that WeBank seal. And that's to do business with major corporations, right? That's the women-owned business um, certification. 
while you're going through that application, my team also screens you for three additional certifications for free. So you can also be screened for the state of Texas hub certification. You can be screened for the federal government's WOSB or limited small business certification. And then Dallas County has theirs as well. Now, you are more than welcome to go to the state of Texas and get your certification through them. You're more than welcome to go to the federal government and get your certification through them. I will say, since we're all BFFs here, that why make more work on your plate when we can do the work for you, right? And keep track of, hey, you're expiring in six months. Go ahead and start getting your information together again versus, oh, wait, when did that expire? Or when am I going to you know, keep track of all the documentation? I will also say, too, by going through this process, we can get you in and out the door in 90 days versus some of the backlog that um, our government partners are experiencing, which is six plus months. Okay. So, um, so the big here thing here though, is to figure out who your audience is. And that's your big takeaway from today is whether or not certification is a value add to you and your business is because of who we have in our network, right? That's women-owned businesses, that's 1,400 fellow women-owned businesses, that's 80 plus corporations that want to do business with you. But if you're like, you know what, that's not my audience, that's great. Certification might not be for you. I do not want you to do it and it'd be a waste of your time and resources. I would encourage you to use the network though and grow your business that way. So let's talk benefits of certification. So we talked that you get four opportunities for certification. Let's talk about why you wouldn't even think about certification as, an, as something to consider. So one, it's widely respected. It's recognized across the country, um, even international is recognizing this WBE certification. Um, people that value diversity within the supply chain are making this a value add into their businesses. Um, education and support, like I mentioned, we host at the Women's Business Council over 45 events a year. That's a lot. <laughs> like, so, and we like to accommodate both virtually and in person. We know how, you know, difficult it can be to kind of step away from the office. Um, but we really want to support your growth and business as you are professionally developing as a leader, as you are kind of thinking about the next phase for your business. Even if you're in that startup or the ideation phase, brainstorming with some of your peers to say, is this the right way I need to go? Or what insurance should I be looking at? Or who are my advisors that I should be leaning on? Um, so providing that education support. Um, one of my favorite things about our network of women-owned businesses is there's no sense of competition. I mean, yes, we know business, right? But at the same time, it's remarkable to me to see fellow business leaders that are in the same industry that say, hey, I can't do this contract. Do you want to do you want to go in on it? Or, hey, I know somebody. Let me connect you with it. And it happens all of the time. The other thing I see, too, is that the power of the network and growth is that they say, hey, I can only do a part of the contract and you can do a part of the contract. Let's go in on it together. And from a corporate span, uh, uh, standpoint is that they're thinking, gosh, I get two for one. And they get to count twice the diverse spend um, versus just having one person do that, that contract. So think about partnerships in that, in that space as well. And then the increased visibility. So I haven't heard anything from, from y'all in person, but even on virtual too, if you are a product or thinking about having a product, something tangible that goes on a shelf, you have the WeBank seal. There's a women-owned logo. And I encourage you to kind of, when you're shopping at Costco and Walmart and any of these places, to look for this women-owned logo seal. You'll see it on products. And now that I've told it to you, you'll really see it. Um, but it's a way for you to stand out amongst the competition, right? That's all, that's all that this is about, is just giving you a leg up on the competition around you. Okay, let me pause here before we dive in a little bit more. What kind of questions do y'all have in person as well as online that I can answer for you? Yeah, go ahead. Is minority-owned business stamp totally separate? That's a really great question. So there are multiple certifications that exist, right? I encourage you to get as many as you can if they're applicable for your business. Don't get it just because you fall in that bucket. Again, go back to knowing who your audience is and what you want your business to be looking like. 
if you are minority and woman owned, get both. And what I will say here too, is that I encourage you getting their national certification as well. Um, so that is through um, our friends at the DFW Minority Supplier Development Council, um, Minority, yeah, MSDC. Um, they have a DFW branch as well. If you are veteran owned, which I heard several of you, thank you for your service first off, but if you are veteran owned, get the veteran certification. If you are LGBT owned, get that one as well. It's just casting the net a little bit wider for you and your business. And again, from a corporation standpoint, or even a government entity, they're thinking, gosh, I can count all of these certifications for their goals, right? So the more that you get those bonus points, if you will, on your bid opportunities, the more that you're gonna stand out in the crowd. Great question. If you are minority owned and you do pursue that certification, do them at the same time. And the reason why I say that is because we require a lot of the same documentation. And so you could just copy paste, <laughs> copy paste. Obviously there's gonna be ethnicity related questions as well. And ours is, um, is gender. However, it's just so much easier when you can literally sit there and just say, I got all these ready to go. Yep, good question. Anything online? You have a cost question, but I'm assuming you're getting I will that. definitely yep. talk about that in yep. just a second. Don't panic yet about the cost. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's keep going. So events and programming. So I mentioned that, especially for those of you that probably are in that idea startup phase, maybe certification is not for you. Um, just yet, let me say that. And this is where I want you to really come to our events and programs to build your network, build your business and your idea. Um, we offer three different types of programs at the Women's Business Council. You do not need to be certified to come to this event or to most of our events. Um, we have capacity building, which is our monthly lunch and learns. So again, that's a variety of topics. Maybe you're thinking, gosh, I really need some experience. I think I heard somebody saying HR. We'll have an HR topic once, you know, every now and then. Maybe there's a topic on AI. I don't know what to do with chat GBT and stuff. We'll have something about that. Or maybe it's about professional development. Maybe it's like, how do I handle emotional stress as being a leader, right? So we showcase lots of different topics. And I encourage if any of you, um, are having multiple people on your staff, spread the knowledge, spread the wealth, let them come to a, an event um, and learn so that it's not always you leaving the office and the business, but it's also professional development for them as well. And they get to meet with some peers. So definitely check out our monthly lunch and learns. They're typically the second Tuesday of every month. And um, we'll actually have one today if you wanna come um, all the way out to Irving after this. Um, we also have our mentoring and outreach pillars. So that's where we're focusing on our outreach, outreach to the community. We have business mixers, um, lots of networking. That's like a core for us. We know the value of mingling and getting to know other people. And so we have business mixers. We focus also on inclusion. So we will, speaking of, we will be having a veterans mixer um, in November. Um, so those of you that are veteran owned and considering like entrepreneurship, we will have a gathering of like-minded community. We just had one um, a couple of weeks ago with our Hispanic um, community to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. So we're trying to make sure that the community feels really welcomed and encouraged in their business. And then the last pillar is procurement. It's a big word. Basically what that means is we wanna get you in the room with the right decision makers. We know how hard it is. I can tell you all the time I get the phone call of, I put my information in the black hole of a portal and I don't know what's gonna happen next. I get it, it's a long process, it is the black hole, you don't know what's gonna happen after that. And that's why we are here. We wanna help you bridge that gap and meet those decision makers at our function. So our corporations have their buying team, their supplier diversity professionals coming to our events because they wanna build the relationship. People do business with people they know and trust. If I see you know, Mary multiple times, then I'm gonna be like, I know what she does. I'm going to refer her to somebody else because I trust her now. I know what she does. I know that she does it well. So I can vouch for her. And that's what our staff does. I can say, you know, on core electric, it's going to be like, Hey, Lindsay, do you know somebody that's in catering? Yes, I do. Let me connect you to some of them um, as well as they share that information. So procurement is really focused on business development sales, right? So it's getting you in the, the hot seat with the decision makers that you don't normally have access to. So here are some upcoming events that I highly encourage all of you to attend. 
Like I mentioned, table topics, we have that today. Um, if you're able to join it virtually, that's one of the ones that we live stream, just kind of like the same format here. Um, we have a regional business mixer, and that's just pure networking. And it's free to attend. It is digital. We want to make sure that you have the chance to mingle with people that you don't know, don't have access to. And then this prospect WBE info section. That's a great next phase to this conversation. So it's an online webinar with my certification team where you can ask the specific questions of, hey, I'm thinking of, you know, buying out my husband's shares. What does that look like for me to now become 51% owner? Or, hey, you know, what is this form that you're requesting? Can you give more context to it? And my team will be able to answer those questions for you. It's a great kind of next step to the conversation. Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty, right? Certification criteria. I mentioned at the beginning that certification for us is 51% owned, operated, and controlled by one or more females. What that means is no kidding, you are who you say you are, you're the one who's making the final decision, right? We go through a process where you're gonna submit lots of documentation about you know, sharing who you are is really who you are and who you are in your business. Financials, bylaws, structures, all that kind of good stuff. We want to see that the voting rights end all with a female owner, right? And I can't tell you how many times that women-owned businesses will apply for certification and they don't read their own documentation. And they're like, oh, whoops, there, there's an investor that we got. Kudos to you for an investor, but make sure that they're not making that final call or that you have that final say at the end of the day. We go through all this paperwork. Um, and again, this basically just says you are who you say you are, that you truly are the owner of the business. Can I jump in? Yeah, I'm absolutely. sorry. I do our grant. And this is the number one disqualifier. What is woman owned? It's right here and pay attention. And every one of you should have a copy of your entity formation showing the founder, showing the manager, it's not a registered agent. Sorry, nope. a, we yep. just finished my yeah. grant, or yeah. a grant, and almost half are disqualified because you don't send in woman-owned documentation. And it's kind of... It's heartbreaking. It's, yes. It is, yeah. because we want to see you get those. So yeah. really pay attention into what people ask for that shows your business is truly woman-owned. Yeah, so Absolutely. I just... <laughs> no, I, yes. Can I just ask one yeah. follow-up question on that? Like, is that the... Oh my gosh, I'm not even gonna phrase this right. Is it like the EIN number that was no, certified? That is, is the... not, not what we asked for. Formation documents, entity formation is your LLC, DBA, corporation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it yeah. has like this Texas stamp on it. Is that right? Three, from, yes. from Jane. Yes. Yes. From yes. If it's current, who <laughs> we named that. <laughs> 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 No, and absolutely. So we have a long list of documents on our website too that you can gather before even starting the process. And before you hit submit on the application, because once you hit submit, we can't help you at that point. Like it's, we're gonna be reviewing what you submit and we have to go by that. If you have a question about your structure or any of the documentation, that's when you need to talk to my team before you hit submit. Um, so like I mentioned, you're gonna go online to WeBank link. Again, that's the National Arm. They have um, the online portal. So you're going to submit all the paperwork online. Okay. Once you hit submit, then our team reviews it. Our, we have a committee of volunteers made up of women-owned businesses and corporations as well. It is a confidential, it is strict in terms of your information being public. We hold that very, very dear to us. Um, we review your documentation to verify you are who you say you are. Once it goes through that process, then we have a site visit. What that means is even if you work from your home, we still want to have a conversation. So most of the times it's going to be a virtual in nature. We'll have a Zoom with you. If you are in manufacturing, though, I will preface this by saying we're coming to your facility. We want to see it in action. But everybody else, lucky you, you get to do a virtual one. But again, this is for us to have a conversation. Most people are like, oh, my gosh, what do I need to prep for it? Y'all know your business. We're just going to have a conversation about it, right? But I want to be able to ask you the questions that as an owner, you would know, right? And I don't want to have Mr. John in the corner being like, whispering the answers 
And we can really see that you're not truly the owner or the person in charge. So really just blue side, you can get it. Mm -hmm. Processing fees. That was a question that Donna Lisa had mentioned a little bit ago. So certification process fee starts at $350 annually. It's based on your annual revenue. So again, if you're under a million dollars in annual revenue, yours would be 350 and it's stair steps from there. I think at most it's 1500 a year and that's for like way up there, okay? Um, this is an annual fee. This is an annual certification. You will get so much communication about expiration that it is painful when somebody really does expire because they're like, oh, I got too busy. You will get lots of notification from us and from the national organization because but look, real talk, I know it's a pain point. I know the certification process is hard, okay? I can't do anything about it. This is a national standard. We can help you walk through it. We can help you gather your documentation together. But once you get that first round done, renewal is so easy. Renewal is literally us just saying, hey, has anything changed? What's new in your structure? Have you gotten a new investor? Do we need to look at your voting rights? Anything like that. So I say, don't let it lapse. Because if you lapse, you start over again. And that's the whole process, right? So just stay on top of it. You're probably like, gosh, I'm not even thinking of renewal, but just stay on top of that. But it is an annual renewal. We only do a site visit every three years. If you want to hang out, we can totally talk it every year, but three years is the mandate there as well. And like I mentioned, start to finish, um, it's usually about 50 days. I mean, we technically can say 90 days, but you'll get the information way before then. Okay, just like Tracy mentioned, pay attention. My team was like, you have to hammer this home. Pay attention to your operating agreement language, your voting and investor rights. More time than any, that's the thing that catches people is because it's not truly 51%. Um, if you are applying for multiple certifications, you must upload your driver's license. Okay, that's for those hub and additional ones as well. Tracy? I was just going to say, stress, 50-50 is not woman-owned. And we have people send it in with their husbands and no documentation yep. showing ownership that does not prove woman-owned. So absolutely. it just, it's it has to be so important. One. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, too, like some, we I actually just got this question earlier last week saying, well, I'm really thinking that I should be the owner of the company. We're going to see that you did it a week before you applied. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll be able to see that yeah. happening, um, but we'll help you walk through that. If that truly is your change of direction, we get that, but it's just one of those things where like a little red flag there, you know. <laughs> Any questions about the certification piece? Can you get certified for pre-revenue? For pre-revenue. So for us, we do not require a certain threshold of revenue. Um, we do then, if you don't have revenue with your business, that's when we look at your personal tax record. Yeah. So if you apply for one certification with you guys, is it an application fee for every certification? That's a great question. So it's just that one application processing fee. So those four certifications are just for that one price. So what I will also say, like, like I mentioned, you can go to Hub, you can go to State of Texas, you can go to the WOSB, the, the SBA. Those are free certifications in nature anyways. But for us to be able to do all of that for you, it just makes it so much easier on your plate. Yeah. The renewals are all different, though. Yes or no? The renewals? Um, renewing your applications. Because SBA, it said it was three years. Are they all different in terms of? So we renew it with your WeBank certification. So okay. we check everything and we make sure that everything is in good standing still. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question from Lechway on Facebook Live. And she asked if my LLC is one name. And I'm launching a seasoning under a DBA. She has a food truck. Food. Yeah. Will the certification cover both the LLC and the DBA? So that is a great question. Um, it sounds like it's two separate entities, though. Is that, is that what I'm understanding? Is that it's not really falling under, like, the parent umbrella? I'll ask her for more clarification. I would also tell her to go ahead and uh, reach out to our certification team, too. Okay. They can actually help her with that. All right. Thank you. How do we reach out to your certification? I've got a slide for you. It's certification at, um, and I'll put their information for you as well. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Marilyn and Everly are um, our certification team um, that are gurus of all things certification. Please reach out to them at that certification at email handle. They're checking that every single day. They are the ones who are reading your files. They are the inside out knowledge of all the tricky language that you may have in documentation. 
Um, I will also kind of say this too. There are organizations or businesses out there that help you get certified. Okay. What that means is like you pay them a lot of money and they take care of the certification for you. Basically they're uploading it into the portal for you. Love them. Love that they're entrepreneur spirit, but y'all can do it yourselves. Okay. Um, now some of them offer additional services. That's great. But I will say you are capable women who can do this <laughs> process. You also have most of this documentation as a business owner already. It's just gathering all the stuff. And I know that that takes some time, but before you start to think about paying thousands of dollars to somebody to help you do that, you're basically giving them the documentation and they're uploading it for you. So that's my two cents. Yes. So we have a couple of questions in the chat. Yeah. Um, I'm a solopreneur. Um, do I need to incorporate my business to be certified? You do not need to, um, you could be a solopreneur, love that. Um, and that does not disqualify you from being um, a, a certification eligible. But we will need to make sure that like everything is still in order in terms of like their documentation. Okay. Um, I'm just starting and I don't have a revenue history. It will be according to my personal tax return income. Will that be gross or net? So it is your gross revenue receipts. Um... Is there anything I need to do if I'm adding more services to my current LLC, like coaching? No. no. So when you are applying, and I will say this too, because when you're applying, you're giving me or our team basically a snapshot of who you are as a business owner. Um, and one of the benefits of our organization is that we have a directory. So we have the 1,400 plus women-owned businesses listed in, in a Excel spreadsheet, essentially. Um, as well as our corporate partners' contact information. Again, that black hole, we're trying to erase that for you. Um, so this is where you need to tell us in a really succinct way who you are and what you do. This is the thing, and I'm sure that Tracy and team will probably hear this too from the grants perspective as well, is that I don't necessarily encourage, I, I will say this, don't put anything you want to do, put what you're good at in this information, okay? Because if a corporation or a well-known business looks at your information and says, oh, they do this too? And you're like, actually, um, I want to do that or I'll figure it out. It doesn't look so good, right? And so the biggest thing, and, and this is kind of for those of you that are maybe on a smaller scale as well, I love that you have that enthusiasm of getting that million dollar contract from PepsiCo, right? They're going to swallow you up, okay? <laughs> and so I just kind of say, temper the excitement about doing business on a major scale and work your way into the system. So that's where you might hear tier two, tier three kind of opportunities. So basically what that means is saying, let's say Toyota is looking for a seatbelt provider, okay, to build out their newest truck. Um, maybe I can provide a part of the seatbelt and I'm going to partner with another woman-owned business who does a buckle on the seatbelt, and then we go in on the contract together. That's getting my foot in the door with Toyota. That's not me doing a $5 million contract that I don't know that I have the bandwidth, the staff, the revenue, the all the things to do. And I've seen it before where a corporation, you know, has a contract of that size with a woman-owned business, and sure, they have great intentions, but they get swallowed up by it, and it becomes their only client because that's all they can focus on, Right. And that's not good for your growth either. There's also that instance where they may take that on and then they're like, oh gosh, I can't perform. Now you're really not in a good spot because now corporates are going to talk about you because they're very vocal with one another. And they'll say, hey, don't use them. They can't follow through on their commitments. Okay, so just, I know we want that golden phone to ring and say, okay, you got the contract, but just kind of ease your way into the system and build that credibility and that relationship and trust with these partners. Yeah, but two more. Okay. Um, Jihan wants to know if um, she's still new and growing as a solopreneur. Is there a time frame to abide by and holding off to apply? No, that's a great question. Um, there is not a set template of when I would say go, but that's where you need to get your feet wet and build the network and come around and build the trust and the relationships with our staff, with our partners, et cetera. Um, and then that's when we can help kind of, I don't want to say coach, but because that seems a little too formal, but to be able to encourage you and say, okay, now, 
you know, and, and again, going back to the power of the network, our women-owned businesses can be able to say, hey, I've been in that spot. That is tough. Here's how I got out of it. Or it took me three tries before I even considered moving my business to the next phase of it. Um, so I think it's leaning on experts and people that are your peers to be able to say, like, is this the right time? How should I fill this out? Um, and then the other question was, does this apply to nonprofits? No, it doesn't. I love nonprofits, but it doesn't. It's a for-profit business opportunity only. Um, does your organization provide proposal writing services? We do not. However, we do, like I said, mention those um, educational opportunities. We also love our partners. TWU, SCORE, SB, I mean, you name it, we love our community partners because where we can't support you, we want to be able to give you those resources that can. The Deaf Network, for those of you that are familiar with um, that kind of startup community, that's a great resource for access to capital, um, those kind of um, resources that we can't provide. Any other questions in-house? No? So I am happy to provide all this information to Donalisa to share with all of you. I'm the kind of person that needs to absorb the content and then be like, oh, wait, I should have asked this question. So feel free to reach out to me. Uh, we could put my information in the chat as well. Um, follow us on LinkedIn. We're always promoting, you know, like in my blurb that uh, Tracy read, I'm a champion of you. That's what we're here for. We are here to champion those under champions. Um, and so if I see a product in the store, I'm going to shout out to you. If I get a new member, I'm going to give you some love because that's all we're here to do is support your growth and development um, and, and kind of make a big difference in our local economy and our families. You know, that's that's what we're here for. Any other questions? Anything else? I don't know if I went too fast for you. Uh, no. Okay. Can you give... Um... Give them, tell them some of the different opportunities, because I think many times as small businesses, they don't think it would apply to their type of business. Oh, gosh, you name, I mean, you all name it. The West Coaches, that, we've heard many coaches. coaches absolutely, that. love coaches. Uh, so this is where I get the, that's a great, thank you, Tracy. Um, the questions I get sometimes too are like, you know, I'm a coach, who would I talk to? Where would I fit in the mold of, you know, the big companies? That's what we're here to help you kind of navigate that space, right? So if you are a coach, right, I know that there's several in the room. If you're a consultant, a leadership coach, maybe you're in HR benefits, you know, we've seen that too. Let's work your way into the HR world of the corporation. So it wouldn't necessarily be the same track that XYZ company person is going to go through. You're still going to have to go through the portal and all their systems and stuff like that. But it's like, let me connect you with the right person inside the business versus just kind of casting your net to whoever, Catering, florists, companies are always looking for services, promotional products, got a lot of those marketing ent entities. Companies want to woo their staff to stay, right? So coming up with cool ways. But here's a big thing that I want you all to learn is that two things. One, a capability statement. If you don't know what that is, we have a tutorial on our website, our little blog, I think about it. Um, that I highly recommend watching. We'll also have a session about it coming up in April. Um, but it's a business resume. You need to have one. Um, many corporations are now requiring you to submit a capability statement when you're meeting with them. It's a business resume. It basically is a snapshot of who you are, what you do, what certifications you have. Even sometimes they ask for like what kind of clients you've used or you've worked with to kind of vouch for you again. Just think of a business resume, just like your personal resume. So make sure you have a capability statement. Two, know who your audience is, right? Big takeaway, know who your audience is. If you want to do business with corporate America, great. Let's figure out how to get you in the right door. Many times it's going to be kind of gatekept by that supplier diversity person, and then they open the doors to the buyer. So building that relationship with Terry or John or whoever it is, is really going to go a long way. Um, persistence. But patience is big too. Um, I know that sometimes, I mean, the biggest kind of misnomer is you think, I got certification, I'm, my phone's gonna be ringing like crazy. It, it doesn't work like that. It's a piece of paper, y'all. I mean, like really and truly, it's a piece of paper on your wall. If you work the system though, that's when you start to get the relationships and that's when the contracts start to come. What else? Anything else? Yeah. Any other questions in the chat, Kimberly? 
not at this time. I think you guys answered all of them. Thank you. Do you have, um, do your businesses ever, you sort of answered this, but I, I'll ask this, this way, like, do your businesses ever do business with each other? So for example, Absolutely. as an entrepreneur, I'm looking for legal, I'm yep. looking for SEO marketing, I'm looking for CRM support, yep. like that. Absolutely. Okay. So my gosh, I mean, you have 1400 women owned businesses that have gone through the same process as you. Um, that you can use for janitorial services, stationary provider, business card maker, you know, designers. Yes, use them. I mean, we use our women in businesses as much as we possibly can. Um, but I think that's why not start with that group, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Is that um, list of those companies free for everybody to see? Is if you are a member of, if you are certified, then you have access to it. Awesome. Well, thank you so thank much. You so much. Thank we you so much. We appreciate it. So just a small token of our appreciation is our newest collective wisdom, a book about women. Oh, I love women. this. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank awesome. you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, so just a few things. Um, so this Thursday night is our free headshot um, and networking event. Uh, registration is still open. There's some seats available. So if you are interested in getting a free headshot and of course, an opportunity to network. Um, our November Women Rise is smart tips to increase business revenue. Um, also, our small business training starts November 5th. So as part of our Start Her grant, we always offer small business training course. We do open that up to the community. It's five workshops. So you get a little bit of information about um, resources, uh, business planning, insurance for small businesses, finances for small businesses, entity. So how should you structure your business as well as marketing your business? And I think that's it. Do you have anything, Tracy? Well, I just want to say thank you again to Lindsay for being here and that great information. And thank you all of you for being online. <laughs> awesome. And really one, one last thing, I just want to uh, plug our YouTube channel. I believe it was December of last year. It's already in the link. Oh, it's already okay. in there. Yeah. Yep. It's the capability statement. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Kimberly beat me. I had the link, yeah, hey, but she already posted it. <laughs> <laughs> but also as, as, um, Donna Lisa says that, Please check out the YouTube. Many times we get requests for marketing that we did two months ago. So make sure that's something you can access at any time, day or night. Yeah. If there's ever a topic that you want to hear about, check YouTube. It's likely on there. So awesome. All right. Awesome. So thank you so much, um, Kimberly. I'm going to let me stop.